Hi guys, welcome to back to our super quick revision series. These series are designed to make your job bit easier, bit faster. We are trying to revise every concept and trying to revise each and every question. Let's start it off costing of service sector. Now costing of service sector is comparatively an easier chapter. It started off with that we are trying to be dealing with companies which are there in service sectors. It transports companies which carries the goods or the passengers, the aircraft companies. You have your hospitals, hotels, you have theatres, all these companies. Now, uh, our first point when we all had started away with this particular chapter was for all these companies, how do you measure the cost? So therefore, there are five things that you got to be remembering, one for each industry. Transport sectors that carries the goods, by default, our unit for measurement of cost is going to be ton kilometers or ton miles. Then second, in this case, uh, uh, transport sector that carries uh, passengers, it will be passenger kilometers or passenger miles. For hotels, it's going to be room days. For theatre, it's going to be man shows. For hospitals, it's going to be number of bed days. Number of bed days can also be called as number of patient nights. Okay. In most of the questions, what is my objective? My objective, first of all, could be find cost per unit or find cost per composite unit. Okay. I'll come back to this. Second, find the charges to be charged to the customer. Now, here, my aim is to be finding out cost per unit. But obviously, it might be that question tells us that how much you will charge to the customer. Then those guys will be giving you the profit margin also. You should be adding that profit margin. Now, one thing, if there is one single rate, example, there is one hotel, there is one single rate. Then in that particular case, it's very simple. Suppose this is the total revenue to be recovered over these many room days. You directly divide, you will get rate per room day. But there might be cases whereby you have a differential rate. Say that you have different classes of rooms. Say that you have an aristocrat room, you have a deluxe room up and so on. If that is going to be the case, then in that, you'll have to be making the equation and try to get the answer. One more example, for going, we charge the passenger some different rate. While coming back from this place to this place, we have a differential rate. Then in that case, you'll have to be making the equation and trying to be getting the answer. Okay. So, if there is one single rate, you get it directly. If there are differential rates, please make the equation, try to get the answer. And then there might be many questions whereby decision making is involved. Whereby like, you know, you would like to do a certain thing or not. Some offer has come. Would you like to accept it or not? In all such cases, you follow your principles of relevant costing and decision making that you will have done. Okay. For the <coughs> silly mistakes that do happen, decide the period for which you want to be computing the expenses and the revenue for. Now, example, suppose we try to be deciding that let the period be one year. Now, if the period is going to be one year in that particular case, everything should be gathered for one single year only. Every expense, if it is given monthly, multiply by 12, if it is given uh, weekly, multiply by 52, if it is uh, given daily, you multiply by 360 or 365. But try to get the expenses for the common period. Don't make all these kind of silly errors, please. Okay. Ensure that all the expenses are there for that particular period. Now, for this, I'll give you one small example. Uh, find the cost per unit or cost per composite unit. Example, say that is a transport sector. Transport sector which is carrying the goods. Okay, we were asked find out cost per ton kilometer. So, therefore, one thing that you all do, try to accumulate all the costs. Suppose we all decided, let's try to accumulate all the costs for one year. So, therefore, we added all those particular costs for one year. So, therefore, we got this particular thing, total cost for one year. We were asked, find out cost per ton kilometer. So, therefore, now you are going to be dividing by number of ton kilometers. Okay. Now, how do you get number of ton kilometers? Now, in this case, number of ton kilometers can be calculated as number of tons into number of kilometers. To give you a basic example, say that a truck goes from A to B and in middle C comes. Suppose this distance is 110 kilometers. This is say 90 kilometers. Okay. And a truck starts from A, goes up till C. It was carrying 6 tons. It was carrying 6 tons. At C, it offloads 2 tons out of 6 tons, but then takes 3 tons more. So, therefore, 2 tons it dropped, 3 tons it took. So, therefore, further it will be carrying 7 tons. All this load was for station B. It offloaded everything at station B. Now, it had to come back also. When it was coming back from B to C, it was carrying 5 tons. Okay. Then all these 5 tons had to be dropped at station C. And then from C to A, it ultimately came without any load. If suppose we are given this particular data and we are asked compute number of ton kilometers. So number of ton kilometers will be nothing but number of tons into number of kilometers. So therefore number of tons into number of kilometers 110 into 6 plus 90 into 7. This will be number of ton kilometers going. Then number of ton kilometers coming will be 90 into 5. <coughs> Apart from that plus in this case 
110 into 0. This will be total number of kilometers one way and coming back. Okay, so therefore this will be number of 10 kilometers per round trip. Suppose now those guys say like this, there are 5 trips every day. Okay, so then we'll multiply by 5. Like this, there are 25 working days in a month. You multiply by 25, this will give you number of 10 kilometers in one month. Likewise, there are say 10 operational months because 2 months the business is off. So therefore, we'll multiply by 10. This will give you number of 10 kilometers for the entire year. Once you get total cost for one year, you get total number of 10 kilometers for one year. Please divide, you will be able to get cost per 10 kilometer. Okay, so number of 10 kilometers, exactly same way you have in this case number of uh, passenger kilometers also that's number of passengers into number of uh, kilometers number of rooms into number of days number of people into number of shows number of beds into number of days that's it okay just one caution <clears throat> in all these particular cases example say for hospitals one bed days whenever one bed is occupied for one day that composite unit is called as one bed day okay now then we all had started away with our questions our questions the first question that we all had done was in this case quite simple whereby uh, we were given all the data for a company which runs in this case a minibus okay so therefore there was only one minibus the length of the route is 30 kilometers by default 30 kilometers go, uh, means one place to other uh, to other place this going way is going to be 30 kilometers okay <coughs> Purchase price will be given for depreciation. Try to find out the depreciation. Interest is a cost. You take that particular thing. All other charges were given to you. Whenever all the charges are given to you, just ensure one thing. You decide the period for which you had to try to make the statement. So, therefore, we decided, I think so, that let's try to make a statement for a year. So, therefore, all the expenses we gathered for the year. In part one, in, in part one, our job was what? In part one, our job was that find the rates for the bus bus had 20 seats now 20 seats by default will mean 20 passenger seats will not include the seat of the driver or conductor is planned to make six two-way trips for 25 days uh, per month carrying full load obviously it's a bus beta whenever it will be going from one place to another it is carrying full load whenever it is coming back also it will be carrying full load only okay provide profit at the rate of 20 percent of total revenue so it is 20 percent of sales uh, means one-fifth of sales will become one-fourth of cost. So, therefore, we gathered all the expenses for one entire year. Once we did that, we added up our profit margin, we got our revenue. Once we got the revenue, we divided by number of uh, passenger kilometers for the entire year. And that is how we got the rate for the bus. Now, in this case, in part one, there was only supposed to be one single rate beta. Okay. And that one single rate in this case will be applicable for going and coming. Now, that was your part one. But in part two, the things were slightly different. How? Now, those guys are told, while going, the rate will be one and a half times as compared to the return charges. Okay. So, therefore, if while returning, the charges are X, while going, the charges will be 1.5 X. But it's very important to be saying, what is X? X is the rate per passenger kilometer. So, therefore, while coming back, the rate is X per kilometer. And while going, it is 1.5 X per kilometer. So, now you had to be making the equation. What? That equation will be 1.5x into number of passenger kilometers going. So, therefore, you'll have to separately find out number of passenger kilometers going and number of passenger kilometers coming. Okay. So, you'll have to find out that. And that is why this line was given. While going bus is 130% full. So, therefore, although there are 20 seats, but then people can stand also. So, ultimately, there'll be 26 people beta. Okay. Plus x in this case while coming into number of passenger kilometers of coming this will be equal to your total revenue once you get that thing you find out the value of x you get the value of 1.5 x that's what we all had written also in the shots now we have to work out the fares to be charged per passenger kilometer we decide the period i think one year we all had done it okay and get the revenue find the number of passenger kilometers further in part one there is one single rate hence divide total revenue by number of passenger kilometers to get fare per passenger kilometer. In part two, there is a differential rate. Hence, get number of passenger kilometers separately for going and separately for coming and then make the equation, try to get the answer. Okay, that's it. Uh, that was your question number one. Okay, then question number two. Now, this question slightly important, slightly important. I guess this was your question number two and then your question number three, slightly important. In this question, there was a company that has 15 buses 
दे हैव गिवन यू नंबर ऑफ पैसेंजर किलोमीटर्स फॉर द इंटायर ईयर टू फिफ्टी वन एटी फाइव थाउजेंड फॉर ऑल द बसेस कम्बाइंड पैसेंजर किलोमीटर्स फॉर द इंटायर ईयर सो पैसेंजर किलोमीटर्स आर नॉट टू बी कंप्यूटेड बट वी नीड नंबर ऑफ किलोमीटर्स टू बी कंप्यूटिंग द फ्यूल प्राइसिज और समथिंग लाइक दैट विल रिक्वायर दैट ओके सो दे फोर देन वट डिड वी डू वट डिड वी डू नाउ वी वॉन्टेड नंबर ऑफ किलोमीटर्स पर बस पर एन एम टू सॉल्व आर फर्स्ट पार्ट ओके सो एफ दीज आर नंबर ऑफ पैसेंजर किलोमीटर्स फॉर द इंटायर ईयर वी डिवाइडेड बाई फिफ्टीन दिस विल गिव अस पर बस एंड देन वी डिवाइडेड बाई नंबर ऑफ फोर्टी ऑक्यूपाइड सीट हाउ डिड फोर्टी कम टोटल नंबर ऑफ सीट्स एक्सक्लूडिंग द ड्राइवर सीट वॉज फोर्टी टू बट देर सपोज टू बी टू अटेंडेंस इन इच बस सो देर फोर नंबर ऑफ पीपल वो फोर्टी ओके दैट कैलकुलेशन वॉज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस क्वेश्चन Rest in this case, you try to gather all these costs. Just be careful about this. Route permit charges up to twenty thousand kilometers is five thousand five hundred, and twenty two hundred for every additional five thousand kilometers or part thereof. I guess number of uh, passenger, sorry, the number of kilometers two fifty one eighty five thousand divided by fifteen divided by forty had come to forty one thousand nine seventy five. So therefore, these were number of uh, kilometers for one bus. for the entire year now based upon this you had to be computing route permit charges so up to 20000 kilometers it was 5500 so 5500 in any case was there and 2200 for every additional 5000 kilometers of path there so therefore from 20 to 25 will be one time 2200 then 25 to 30 two times 30 to 35 3 times 35 to 40 4 times and 40000 to 41975 5 times so therefore 2200 will be coming 5 times so therefore your uh, total charges were 5500 plus 2200 into 5 that was 16500 okay now once we all did that then in this case what was given to you in the question was something like this in part first of the question Find out suggested fare per passenger kilometer. We already had number of passenger kilometers, and at twenty percent to cover up general uh, overheads and sufficient profit. So therefore, we found out our cost. We added up that twenty percent margin. Once we did that, we got the revenue divided by number of passenger kilometers. We got the answer. Uh, what should be the fare per passenger kilometer? Part one was simple. Now in part two, what was done? In part two, what those guys had told us. That next two years there will be inflation at the rate of eight percent. So therefore, increase every expense by eight percent. But those guys are told route permit charges will not be subjected to inflation. So therefore, there will be no inflation over there. Plus, there will be no inflation for depreciation. That's implied whether those guys have mentioned or not. Okay. And so therefore, inflate all your expenses by eight percent. Okay, whatever the amount comes again by eight percent because we want to be doing that for the next two years. Okay, and then government has told us that government will be fixing the rates for the next two years as one point three five. So therefore, now that fare is given to us. So therefore, what did we do? We got our revenue. We had our cost that the inflated cost. We are to be finding out the profit. For the next two years. Now, obviously, the profit was declining because the cost is increasing. But the government has told that this is the only amount that you can charge to your customers. So, therefore, as a profit is falling, we can be seeing that particular thing that it is not going to be remaining a profitable business for us. In fact, out of profit, no, even general overheads have to be met here. So, therefore, it's not looking like a profitable business in future. So, either you can shut down the business or you can tell the government that we have to be increasing the prices for the future. Okay. Now that's it. You're this particular question. Then in that case, question number four was there. Now question number four was not actually a very difficult question, but then few silly errors that happened. It was on a, uh, on a airline company. Now airline company. I've tried to make a diagram, but before that, I'll just do one small thing. I skip that question number three. In this particular case, this was question number three. Uh, I did not read the shots of that, which I'm trying to be doing. we have to be finding out rate per passenger kilometer it's a nice problem especially when working out passenger kilometer so just be careful of that there are 42 seats of out of which two seats are there for attendance also do check how we have calculated route permit charges that explain to you next two years will be inflation of 8% hence all expenses will increase by 8% except route permit charges and depreciation get new expenses rate is given to you for the next two years rate means the charges that we are going to be charging to the customer we say that profit is decreasing uh hence the company should tell the government to allow it to increase the charges obviously if that is not possible then like you know you can think of shutting down these particular routes as loss will be come okay now that's it for your question number 3 then question number 4 as i told was on a airline company now what was this particular question listen very carefully we had a plane that flies from a to b our capacity is 260 
but then we have observed that only 240 passengers come the charges for each uh, passenger is given to us we have to pay commission to the travel agents and we have to incur food charges also okay so therefore this is the net amount that we all get okay this is the net amount that we all get for 240 passengers so therefore this is the total contribution that we are getting today minus all the fixed costs that are given to you so therefore fixed cost in this particular case just a sec fixed cost in this particular case was supposed to be 2 lakhs 40,000 and 48,000 these are all your fixed costs as such okay now all these particular fixed costs that are there we subtract to find out whatever was a profit and then our break even point was very simple total fixed cost divided by contribution per passenger now this part was simple then what was the difficult part okay but i'll say one thing more over here listen and what is that before the offer we are flyway company by the way okay we are flyway we carry 240 passengers from a to b variable cost is food cost and the commission cost rest all are fixed cost work out the profits and find out break even point this point was very simple now in future what happens was there is another company is called as hold to go it says that you are flying no from a to b so do one thing take a stop over at d so therefore plane will go from a to d first okay and then from d to b and then from D to B, no, we will book 50 tickets and whatever we might do of those 50 tickets, that is our problem. Okay. So, 50 passengers only D to B. Total plane is of what capacity? 260. Out of that 50 tickets, now these guys will be booking from D to B. So, therefore, how many empty spaces are there? 210. Now, one more statement that those guys are told that out of these 240 people, no, 25 people in any case will drop out now because it will be taking longer time, no, because first of all, the plane will be going from A to D and then from D to B. So, therefore, 25 people will voluntarily drop. So, how much is left beta? 215. But you all will understand now, we don't have space only for 215. We have space only for how much? 210. So, therefore, there will be only 210 people from D to B. Now, these 210 people will be those particular people only who ultimately will be flying from A to B. These guys, first of all, will be going from A to D <coughs> and they will be sitting in the plane only. Although the plane will be stopping at D and then again, these people will be flying from D to B. Now, these guys now will be given the food two times, once over here and once over here. Be careful of that. Okay, that is a very important adjustment in this entire question. So, therefore, now 210 seats will be occupied by those particular people who are going from A to B, but obviously the plane will be halting at D also. Now, the capacity of the plane was 260. Out of 260, 210 people will be there going from A to B. So, therefore, in A to D sector, there is still a space for how many people? 50 people. That is 260 minus 210 is equal to 60 people. Just one thing these 60 people will be only flying from a to d and then those guys will be getting down once they get down these new 50 people will be coming okay and then in this particular case they will be going from d to b now there will be no commission over here because one company has approached us and booked the 50 tickets there will be commission over here for these particular people and there will be commission over here for these 210 people as such okay so i'll just try to be repeating the calculations once so therefore there is no problem first thing in this particular case is that our offer is only what our offer is this 50 people so therefore this is first 50 left is 210 so therefore second now 210 is actually lower of 210 and 215 then this second figure comes over here also 210 people because these will be the same people who will be first of all going from a to d and then from d to b and then this is going to be your balancing figure as such okay now, this is whatever will be happening after the offer and that is what I have tried to write down over here after the offer, which Holtgo has given to uh, Flyway. Holtgo will deal with Flyway and take 50 tickets from D to B. Rest 210 can be sold by Flyway to the outsiders out of 240 people. 25 will go away in any case because it will be taking a longer time. Rest 215 can go, but there is only space for 210. Hence, there will be only 210 people from A to B, which includes D to B also. In A to B, there are only 260 minus 210. 210 are these particular people only. That is 50 seats left, which flyaway gives to the passengers. will pay commission on these also for 210 passengers. Flyway will incur food cost two times. First of rupees 300 when they are going from A to D and then of rupees 200 when they are going from it should be D to B. Okay, D to B. Further, 
hence to find contribution hence to find contribution and profit we divide the customers into three categories beta which three categories a to d d to b and obviously a to b there are some extra costs also fuel costs will also be uh, rising because obviously the plane now will be coming and stopping at d again will be going from d so they will be taking more time and there are some extra landing charges also find out the profit once you find out the profit you can try to be doing the conclusion as such okay now this question just sheer based upon like you know trying to be computing number of passengers it is difficult okay once you know the number of passengers in each and every category the question is not difficult as such okay that was your this particular question question number four okay and then in this case you have your question number five now question number five was actually a question on relevant costing in relevant costing there is a company called as golden pacific airlines it flies from Delhi to Leh, it has a flight called as GP022, uh, New Delhi to Leh. Now it is thinking in this particular case, like you know, that whether this route is a profitable route, yes or no. That is whatever these guys are thinking, it's a profitable route or not. Okay. Now, so we had to try to be thinking that should we run this particular route or not? Now, those guys gave us a statement based upon which there is a loss, okay? And that is why these guys are thinking, let's not run the flight from Delhi to Leh because it is resulting in a loss. We were asked to evaluate whether we should run that particular thing. So, therefore, we'll use our principles of relevant costing. Obviously, this will be your relevant revenue. This is your ticket revenue. We are going to be getting this much. Less variable cost, this will be relevant cost for us. And then expenses were the thing that we had to try to analyze, okay? How? Listen. You have salaries of flight crew. Something was given to you over here. Members of flight crew are paid fixed annual salaries. So therefore, whether plane flies or not, in any case, you will have to be paying. So therefore, these are actually apportioned kind of a thing. So therefore, this was irrelevant. Okay. Whereas flight assistants are paid the salaries by the flight. That means if the plane will fly, then they will be getting their salary. So therefore, this will be a specific expense for this particular flight if it is a specific expense obviously it will become relevant so therefore we had taken this particular thing we all had not taken this for every expense something or the other is given to you you just have to try to read and try to understand the instructions further overnight cost for flight crew and assistance at destination obviously this particular cost will be relevant cost only boss because in any case if the plane will be going then these guys will be going there they will be staying over there they'll be staying at lay lay is not their uh, hometown all the hotel cost etc has to be borne by the company okay fuel for the aircraft so obviously will be relevant plane will fly so therefore fuel cost will be relevant depreciation in any case is supposed to be a irrelevant cost here so therefore don't talk of your depreciation it is not even a cash expense okay then in this case depreciation sorry then in that case the liability insurance now see one third of the liability insurance is a special charge Assessed against a flight GP022 because in the opinion of the insurance company, the destination of the flight is on high risk area. So out of this, no, one third of the liability insurance is specific. It is only because a plane flies from Leh, sorry, from Delhi to Leh and Leh is a high risk area. There is extra insurance. So therefore, this will be a specific cost. So therefore, one third of this particular cost will be relevant. Depreciation in any case is an irrelevant cost. Further. The hangar parking fees, this was important, is a standard fee charged for aircrafts at all the airports. But if the plane will fly from Delhi to Leno, then this hangar parking fees will have to be paid at Leh. If it will not be flying, this hangar parking fees will have to be paid at Delhi. So in any case, this expense has to be incurred. So therefore, this hangar parking fees was a useless fees. Okay. So therefore, this particular thing is irrelevant. But this 28,000 flight promotion, it must be for the flight only. Some advertisement we all do, especially for... Uh, promoting this kind of a flight so therefore it was supposed to be a relevant cost okay once you all do that you find out if it is still profit from sales you subtract all the relevant cost that time you all do it else you all do not be doing it okay so this question as such is quite simple i might not even read the shots of that i've clearly written the shots also which all costs are irrelevant which all costs are relevant so therefore you can go through that no no much point in reading that particular thing okay this was your question number five then question number six now, out of all the questions, no, this question number six is supposed to be most important. It was there in the modules also. Apart from that, it came, I think, in the RTPs also. Uh, RTPs, I think, of November 2021. <clears throat> now, this question was about a hotel sector. 
ओके नाउ इन दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन वॉट ऑल वॉज देर करंटली देर इज अ होटल विच इज डूइंग बिजनेस ओके होटल निको और समथिंग नाउ इट हैज ट्वेंटी फाइव ऑफ द क्लासिक रूम्स एसेट्रा एसेट्रा देन हाउ मच दीज गाइज चार्ज टू देयर पैसेंजर्स टू देयर कस्टमर्स इज गिवन ड्यू टू थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड पर रूम नाइट द वेरिएबल कॉस्ट इज गिवन टू यू सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑक्यूपेंसी इज देयर फिक्स कॉस्ट इज गिवन विच इज इनकर्ड यूनिफॉर्मली थ्रू ऑफ द इयर ओके सो दे फोर बेस्ड अपॉन ऑल दीज पर्टिकुलर डिटेल्स वी ट्राई टू वर्क आउट वट एवर वॉज अ प्रॉफिट इन दिस करंट ईयर नाउ दिस वॉज वॉट एवर वॉज अ थिंग बट दिस सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट नो इज स्लाइटली अ वरिंग साइन वाई बिकॉज दिस इज एवरेज ऑक्यूपेंसी फॉर द इंटायर ईयर इन मिडिल देर इज अ सेकेंड क्वार्टर ऑल्सो इन सेकेंड क्वार्टर द ऑक्यूपेंसी इज वेरी लेस दैट सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट इज एवरेज फॉर द इंटायर ईयर बट इन सेकेंड क्वार्टर इट इज वेरी लो इट इज ओनली एक्सपेक्टिंग टू सेल नाइन हंड्रेड ऑक्यूपाइड रूम्स ड्यूरिंग द क्वार्टर टू ओके सो दे फॉर दैर इज क्वाइट लो सो इट इज थिंकिंग लाइक यू नो दैट वी कैन क्लोज डाउन एंटायर होटल ओनली इन क्वार्टर टू दिस वॉज वन थिंग और दोज गाइज आर थिंकिंग लाइक यू नो देर इज वन अदर ऑप्शन वट इज दैट दैट लेट्स ट्राई टू ओपन अ होटल और समथिंग ओके लेट्स ट्राई टू ओपन अ रेस्टोरेंट अ इटालियन स्टाइल रेस्टोरेंट now if they'll be opening that then they are thinking like you know that the revenue will increase cost will but those guys have not given you that thing directly instead those guys have given you a graph this graph is part of the question not part of the answer it's not made by us it is made by the question only okay so it's part of the question please now from here you have to try to get all the details as such okay what details you will have to try to be getting what will be the sales apart from that will be the cost up and so on from here we try to gather all the details and those guys have asked you analyze the profit improvement plan okay so therefore you have to be trying to be saying that is this plan good or not okay now see what did we do over here in this case no <coughs> 7310 this data is very important this will be the occupancy once we open that italian style restaurant okay so obviously margin of safety is sales minus break even sales sales minus break even sales now in this particular case one other thing also and what was that see this is your sales correct and these are number of occupied rooms means number of room days kind of a thing 1500 3000 4500 65 6000 7500 there are two blocks over here two blocks over here two blocks over here over here no in this particular case it is one single block so therefore 1500 is for two for one will be 750 so therefore this is the data at 8250 room days okay and this particular sales in this case was 30 million so therefore 30 million is for 8250 room days we start to be dividing it same way in this case we try to be computing all the cost up and so on i'll read the shorts first then i'll come back to it the hotel business is just doing fine in the entire year there is quarter 2 which is a slack season it is coming out with a profit improvement plan for increasing the year's profit what is that plan continue the business for the year as it is and suffer in quarter 2 do remember that current occupancy is 75% which is average occupancy for the year it must be very high in the other seasons and low in the quarter 2 it also includes occupancy of quarter 2 which i told you which is 900 room days in that also it is thinking to shutting down in quarter 2 as occupancy is only 900 room days so currently we all have some particular profit but a quarter 2 doesn't do good so therefore these guys are thinking we'll shut down in quarter 2 but over here no over here you all will understand that uh, it will not be a very good option it will not be a very good option listen option 2 open a restaurant and try to increase the profit for the year okay due to this what will happen to the company is given to you in the graph only we have to find out the profit <coughs> for the year under both the options under both the options means if we continue as it is or in this particular case if we open that italian style restaurant now <coughs> actually there is one other option also and what is that that we can shut down in quarter 2 but in case we all do that na then losses will be very high why because we will be losing the 
uh, revenue and the contribution that we were getting from there. This is 900 room days into 1800 rupees of contribution. So therefore 1.62 million fixed cost in any case will still get incurred. That is a normal assumption of decision making. So therefore this will be directly our loss will become worse than the current situation also. Okay. Now fixed cost will not be changing. Huh? Even if you shut down in quarter two, if fixed cost had to be reducing, those guys had to tell us like we were getting in a questions of temporary shutdown point. Please refer your chapter number two. It should have been given. Hence, shutting down is not a good option at all. Okay. It is not a good option at all. Okay. So therefore, profit is higher under option two, although break even point is also high. We try to be working out the new profits over here. Okay. That under 7310 room days, if suppose 7310 room days will be there, then in that particular case, what will be the revenue? What will be the cost? We try to be working out all those particular things. And then in this particular case, we try to be working out the profits. Example, if one thing I can directly try to be seeing earlier, our fixed cost for the year was 9 million. But if we are going to be opening this Italian style restaurant, our fixed cost in this case will be becoming 12 million. Okay. And uh, with the help of this particular graph, you can try to be working out what will be the variable cost. The variable cost in this particular case can be easily found out, after, out of 23.75. Uh, 12 lakhs in this particular case is nothing but, uh, sorry, 12 million, I guess, is, uh, is supposed to be your fixed cost. The remaining will be your variable cost. That variable cost in this particular case is because of 8250 number of room days. You can divide, you will start to be getting your variable cost. So, therefore, you get your new revenue per room day, okay? That will be nothing but 30 million of sales divided by 8250, less your variable cost that I told you this figure minus this particular figure divided by 8250, you will be getting your variable cost per room day. Once that thing is done, you will be getting your contribution per room day into number of room days that will be 7310. Once you will get that, that will be your total contribution less your fixed cost. In this case, that will be 12 million. Try to be getting your new profit over here. Compare old one and the new one. Under the new one, your profit is higher. So that's a good sign. One riskier point, break even point is also higher, but then your margin of safety is also very high. So therefore, based upon the financials, it is much better that we all should open the restaurant. That will also give another source of the income that in future might be far more lucrative. Okay. As compared to say your hotel business also that future will decide. But even on the like, you know, the first instance, this, pro this business looks quite good as such. Okay. That's it. <clears throat> that was your question number six. Okay. Then question number seven. Question number seven was supposed to be not a very tough question. There is a resort that opens for 200 days in a year. It has 40 rooms which are rented out on 200 per night on double occupancy basis means two people will be there in that room and together those guys will be paying 200. Expected occupancy is 85%. Okay. So work out the revenue from the customer. Now you will be getting the revenue for obviously letting out of the rooms and you will be getting the revenue in this particular case from the shops and from the restaurant also. From the shops, each of the tourists will be spending 50 per day in the shopping arcade, okay, and 80 per day in the restaurant. So therefore, this will be extra revenue. But then do remember that this is a revenue from each tourist and in one room, there are supposed to be two tourists. Don't forget that, okay. Then obviously this and this will be giving you three three sources of revenue there will be cost also these are the ratios of variable cost to sales volume so whatever is the uh, revenue based upon that the 50 percent in restaurant business will be say 60 percent work out the cost of the shops and of the restaurant what about the cost of this that is given to you there will be a cost of rupees 30 per day per occupied room so therefore work out the cost for the entire year and then in this case there will be a fixed cost of rupees 10 lakh that is supposed to be an easier one okay now, once you will do this, you try to be finding out your uh, profit for the entire year. We are trying to be working out the profit for the entire year because I think the data was given to you for a year only are as such. Okay. And then there was a suggestion that we want to be reducing this 200 to 150. The occupancy will increase from 85% in this case to your 95%. Okay. And then in this particular case, you try to be finding out whatever will be the new profit. If the profit will increase, it is acceptable, else it is not. Okay, that is whatever is the thing that I have written. Hotel is occupied for 200 days. It charges 200 per room day on double occupancy basis. That is for two people. Its sources of revenue includes the revenue from the restaurants and from the shops also. 
but the revenue from shop and restaurant is given per person or per tourist just be careful do remember in one room there are two people there is another option whereby occupancy can be increased to 95 percent with the reduction in rates work out the profit whichever is higher it is better so that is whatever we all had told now <coughs> that was your question number eight okay sorry i guess that was your question number seven now your question number eight now question number eight was on a hotel this hotel has lot of cost and it has three types of wards you have general ward you have cottage ward and then you all have a deluxe ward obviously is going to be charging different rates for them for general ward if we take it up as x okay for cottage ward it is 2.5x for deluxe ward it will be twice of the cottage ward bed means 5x over here so if for three types of charges will be x 2.5x and 5x per bed day per bed day now these will be the rates that we are going to be charging to the customer okay but then first of all work out your cost you have a rental cost of 10,000 per month you can multiply by 12 plus there is 5% of total taking so therefore if our grand revenue will be x okay grand revenue grand revenue in this particular case then 5% of that will be an other rent okay so if a rent has two components one is this particular component other is this particular component okay then those guys are saying about the occupancy in general ward it is 100% cottage ward it is 80% deluxe ward it is 60% so therefore based upon this try to be working out the number of bed days number of bed days will be number of beds that was given to you over here into number of days I guess number of days last line has told us take 360 days in the year into the percentage occupancy but then there will be some extra bed days for general ward which are given to you over here <coughs> There, in general what there were occasions when the beds were full, extra beds had to be hired at the rate of 20 per bed. We figured it out this must be 20 per bed per day only. The total hiring charges for the extra beds incurred for the whole year amounted to rupees 12,000. So therefore 12,000 divided by 20, this particular thing will be uh, 600. Okay, so therefore this was extra number of bed days. Okay, there was a hard specialist cost of 15,000 into 3 that was given to you. And all these particular costs were given to you. So therefore try to total up all your costs. In all your costs, it will be all these costs. Once all these costs are done, then point number 4 cost was also there. Apart from this, this 12,000 rupees was also there. Apart from that, that rental cost was also there. And then there was another rental cost of 5% of total takings. Now to find out that, you had to be making the equation. That is cost plus another cost of rental, 5% of sales plus profit at the rate of 20% of sales is equal to your total sales. We work out the sales. Once we got the sales, after that, there were supposed to be three different rates. One sec. Uh, total sales means, I'm just writing over here, will mean your total revenue. Your total revenue will be coming from three sources, beta. From your general ward, from cottage ward, from deluxe ward. Let the charges be x, 2.5x and uh, 5x into number of bed days for each of them. That's it. Once we all did that, our job was completely over. We figured out what will be x. We figured out what will be 2.5x. We figured out one what will be 5x. Once we all did that, we added our GST at the rate of 8% and we will charge it to the passengers. Okay. That was your question number 8. It is supposed to be a one-star question. Just a basic question. I wanted to be getting it done for the hospital sector. Work out the number of room days for the year. Uh... <coughs> Work out the number of room days, room wise for the year. This is important. So for general ward separately, cottage ward uh, separately, there will also be some extra room days because of extra occupancy. Add all the cost and arrive at the revenue. Make an equation and get the rates. Add GST to get the final rates. Just in cost, be careful. There is that rental cost. Then there are two parts of that rental cost. Okay, that's it. This is question number eight. And then your question number nine as such. Question number nine in this particular case was what? Question 9, again a question I think on a hospital sector, whereby the charges that we are going to be charging from the passengers are given to us. Now, pe, in this case, no bed days could not be computed in a normal way. We have to try to be thinking like, you know, how to compute number of bed days. A number of bed days, we will directly compute as fees collected for the year divided by charges per bed day. Okay. So, therefore, that will give us number of bed days and then variable cost based upon the patient days. Patient days means bed days only. So, therefore, this figure divided by number of patient days will be giving you variable cost per patient day. Apart from that, these were the two other fixed costs that was there. And then based upon the number of patient days, no, you had number of nurses which were supposed to be recruited at the rate of 48,000 per annum per nurse. You work out the profit that was supposed to be the profit for 2022 
2023 आई थिंक फॉर 2023 द कॉस्ट अदर देन अ पोर्शन ओवरहेड्स विल बी गोइंग अप बाय 10% आई गेस वी अप्लाई 10% इन दिस केस टू डिपार्टमेंटल फिक्स्ड कॉस्ट एंड टू वेरिएबल कॉस्ट पर बेड डे सो देयरफॉर 10% वाज अप्लाइड टू दैट अ पोर्शन कॉस्ट विल बी राइजिंग बाय 2 एंड 1/2 लाख सो देयरफॉर दिस वाज 10 लाख बिकेम 12 एंड 1/2 लाख अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट द नर्सिंग स्टाफ कॉस्ट विल बी राइजिंग टू 54000 बेस्ड अपॉन द नंबर ऑफ पेशेंट डेज यू कैन ट्राई टू बी कंप्यूटिंग बट वन स्मॉल थिंग इन 2023 नो ऑल दीस पर्टिकुलर कॉस्ट विल बी राइजिंग बट नंबर ऑफ बेड डेज एट सच विल बी बेटा रिमेनिंग same only because the occupancy is not supposed to be rising in 2023 so many of your cost are rising but your occupancy will not be increasing and if nothing else is told even the selling price your selling price means fees per bed they will be remaining 425 only that was supposed to be there in the previous year so therefore once we all uh, did that we prepared our forecasted statement for 2023 and we found out there will be a loss and if there is a loss the management was thinking let's shut down the department all although it has not asked us that whether you know you want to uh, like you know you try to evaluate whether you want to shut down or not it was not asked but just because in 2023 there is a loss so therefore company is thinking to shut down okay what we all were asked over here present the statements of 2022 and 23 we worked out the profits for both the years then for 2023 we are to be working out the break even bed capacity now break even bed capacity will be nothing but fixed cost divided by contribution per bed day the problem was nothing except in fixed cost there is nurses cost also beta and nurses cost is kind of that semi variable cost we all had done one question in your chapter number 2 itself whereby we had try to be finding out break even point whenever there are such different categories of cost in that there was one question whereby there was a college that had taken out the students for a picnic or something you had many types of cost your prizes cost bus cost then you have some block entrance fees and that time i gave you one hint for solving such question every fixed cost sorry every semi variable cost is also a fixed cost but in that category only so therefore for nurses there were four categories so therefore we divided our fixed cost into four categories and then we found out the break even point so we got four break even points out of that first three break even points got rejected because they were not in that category so in first three categories there will always be loss only in the last category we got one break even point that will be the only break even point that will be there okay once this thing was there and then increase in fees per bed day required to justify the continuation of the department in 2023 no obviously there was a loss now those guys are saying increase the fees increase the fees so that in this particular case there is some like you know it makes some sense to continue the business okay so what did we do we took the profit as zero we all went behind and tried to compute that fees uh per bed day as a balancing figure the moment we got that our job was over okay that was your this particular question data for 2022 is given charge changes are given to you get the figures for 2023 based upon the changes work out the profit fees per room day and occupancy will be remaining same be careful of nurses charge for break even point do that whatever was done in the first few questions of decision making for break even point every semi variable cost is also fixed cost but within its own limit first three break even points will be rejected but the last one will be accepted in end we have to find out that fees per bed day at which profit will be zero take the profit as zero add all the cost get the fees divide by number of bed days to get the new fees per bed day over here okay once we all did that our job was over okay now that was your this particular question and then question number 10 now this was all about ethical issues also there was a hospital which is might be making some profits up and so on that we all don't know but then its profit is falling or it is facing margin pressures okay so therefore in this particular case those guys are thinking what is to be done to be increasing the profit now what happens in this hospital that these guys know do the treatment under a package system whereby those guys say on an average you no know, we charge a lump sum fees okay how much is that fees we all don't even know also but we charge a lump sum fees and we all will treat you those guys have found out that on an average you no know, a patient will be staying in the hospital for 2 and a half days now those guys think that let's cut it down to 2 days let's tell the patient whether you are okay or not please get out in 2 days now with that they will be able to save this variable cost over here now variable cost that those guys uh, incur is 500 per patient day so 500 into 15000 into 0.5 okay because 500 is for one patient day we will reduce it by half a patient day you know from 2 and a half to 2 so therefore that will be a annual savings that these guys will be getting so therefore this is relevant revenue for us apart from that now those guys are thinking like you know that if suppose patient is not okay they will again come back so number of patients will increase a lot for that we had to incur 25 lakh rupees to accommodate these increases 
so therefore this will be another cost we assume that this 25 lakh rupees will be incurred each and every year okay we assume that particular thing will be incurred each and every year okay lastly lastly now obviously patients are not okay again those guys are coming back so therefore we are incurring this much but those guys have thought that again we will charge them because they are not okay again they are uh, coming back to us we will charge them again for coming to us and how much we will charge 4500 per patient day so 4500 into 15,000 into 2% increase will be there in number of patients who will come back again. So therefore, this will be an extra revenue. We work out this particular thing and in end, there were means there were two benefits. One is that our variable cost will be saved and once due to the readmission of the patients, readmission means those guys who are not okay, they will again come back, we will charge them this much. This will be an other inflow for us. So therefore, two inflows. But then in this case, there will be one outflow. You work out the net figure. That's it. Once you all do that, our job was completely over. Uh, this was your part one. But then in part two, no, you had to be commenting. Also comment on the result and other factors. Now, other factors, obviously, it's a hospital. It's got to be taking care that nothing happens to the patients. You are trying to be thinking to reduce a patient stay from two and a half days to two days. Yeah, it's not good. If something happens to the patient, your goodwill will go for a toss. Somebody might do a case on you. You know, you all always have a duty of earning profit, but then you also have a duty towards your patients. You are in a hospital business whereby these duties are very important. So therefore, hospitals should think of all these things and not only the profits. That's what we all are told in the comments. Okay, that's it about your this particular question. Okay, I hope that you are finding these videos quite useful. Just I have one objective to make your portion get revised slightly faster. So therefore, this is one subject like, you know, that doesn't occupy much amount of your time. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye.